Uh, hey, uh, hi, Mr. Uh, Pabe. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we would like to hear you for about 10, 15 minutes, your, your thoughts about the um, um, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, we know that you're indep an independent voice. We would have had uh, speakers from Palestine as well, but uh, unfortunately they, um, um, they, they told us they couldn't uh, be here. Uh, so we will uh, hear you for uh, 10 minutes um, as a keynote speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Yes. Um, yes, you can. Very good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I do apologize for not being with you uh, uh, physically. Uh, this uh, September and October have become very hectic uh, a month, and uh, it was very difficult to logistically to be uh, everywhere. But thank, thank God for uh, online uh, alternatives that enable us to, to meet and talk. If you want to understand the present realities in Israel, I think one good place to begin with is to think about uh, big demonstrations in Cyprus, or even a big debate in Cyprus, like in the Cyprus Forum, on the future of Cyprus that totally ignores the conflict inside Cyprus, the separation, the uh, failure to reach so far an agreement. Talking about everything apart from probably, which is the most important element of political life in Cyprus. Compare it to Israel, uh, the present so-called civil, called civil war in Israel, or the present very first debate in Israel uh, about the future of Israel is a debate without the Palestinians. So they're not only not present in, in today, unfortunately, they're not with us in this uh, panel. They are also not, which is more important, they are not part of the debate on the future of Israel and Palestine, which is incredible. And, but I think that's the first thing to understand about the present reality of Israel. This is not a debate about the future of Israel. This is debate about the future of Israel without the Palestinians. Israel without the Palestinians was already framed by organizations such as the uh, Amnesty International, and Human Rights Watch, and even an Israeli human rights uh, organization by the name of Betzelem, was defined as an apartheid Israel. And I think that's what happens now in Israel. This is not a debate about the future of Israel. It's a debate about the future of apartheid Israel. And the two camps are very clear. There is a camp that uh, grew up since 1967 in the illegal settlements in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, group, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a camp that believes in messianic Zionism, a Jewish fundamentalism, racism towards Arabs and, and Muslims and Palestinians. And this grew up in the settlements. I call it uh, the state of Judea. And for many years, it was contained within the West Bank. But now it has spread into Israel itself, and it actually wants to impose its own ideas of the future of Israel on Israel, all over, all over Israel, or what I would call historical Palestine, namely Israel, the West Bank, and the West Bank, and probably also the Gaza Strip, if they could. Against them is the old Israel, the one that was also an apartheid Israel, as far as the Palestinians were concerned. Uh, the difference between the state of Judea, the state of the settlers that grew up in the West Bank and is now threatening to take over Israel as a whole, the difference between that state and the previous state, that the previous state was offering the Jews, if not the Palestinians, it was offering the Jews a far more democratic space, a more pluralistic state, uh, space, a more secular space. Many way, in many ways, the city of Tel Aviv symbolized the, the kind of Israel that is now a certain group of Israelis are trying to defend against the attempt by what I call the state of Judea or the settler state to take over Israel as a whole. So the, 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 this is the essence of what we are seeing here. The uh, electoral 
those who are, you know, have the right to vote, which does not include the Palestinians in the West Bank or in the Gaza Strip, those who have the right to vote uh, within the Jewish community seems to lean towards the Judea state, the settler state. They seem to want Israel, which is less democratic, even for the Jews, more theocratic, more religious, more Zionist, more extreme in its attitudes towards the Palestinians and uh, the Arab world. And uh, <laughs> they have won the elections, and they want to turn this victory in the elections from November 2022 to a mandate to change the nature of the state, the nature of the regime. Now, from a Jewish Israeli point of view, from a point of view of a secular liberal Jew, their vision of Israel is a disaster, one that they would fight against and one that maybe they would leave Israel if they would lose this battle. From a Palestinian perspective, whoever wins will continue the oppression of the Palestinians, the colonization of Palestine, the dispossession of the Palestinians. And I think that is something very important to, to understand uh, uh, in what we are witnessing. I don't want to predict who would win, whether it will happen uh, immediately or in a later future. Uh, I'm, but I am persuaded and convinced in one particular uh, issue, that um, Israel of the next 10 years would be even less democratic, even towards the Jews, more brutal in its attitudes towards the Palestinians, and more theocratic and religious in the public domain. That doesn't mean, by the way, that Israel could not continue to normalize its relationship with uh, uh, neighboring Arab regimes. In fact, Israel looks more and more like an Arab regime, as, uh, given the uh, developments in recent uh, years. It doesn't mean that the international community would uh, turn it into a pariah state as they did to apartheid South Africa, but it does maybe increase the possibility that the international community and definitely the Arab and Muslim societies would regard uh, the Israel of the next 10 years as even less acceptable and legitimate than they uh, treated it before. And maybe the Palestinians would have an historical opportunity because of that, and despite the fact that this would lead to far worse and fierce and brutal policies towards them, nonetheless, uh, 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 it may open an opportunity for the Palestinians to win more international legitimacy for their uh, struggle for liberation and independence. But that, of course, does not only depend on the international community and does not only depend on what Israel is doing, it also depends on whether the Palestinians do have the capability to be ready for that historical opportunity should it arise, namely in terms of unification, representation, uh, and political preparedness. The, the, this is still a big question. Uh, but I think that uh, it, as, as bad as it looks now from a Palestinian perspective, uh, it, this kind of developments in Israel do open May, may open, not too open, may open new opportunities uh, uh, for the Israelis. I, I would like to finish by saying that uh, in the academic world, uh, there is a shift in the way of analyzing Israel, uh, a, a dramatic shift that I think we should be aware of, uh, of course, which Israelis reject. But I think it's important to know that in the world of production of knowledge, uh, there is a change, a very fundamental change from a very clear image, academic image, of Israel as the only democracy into the Middle East, we are moving to viewing Israel as an active settler colonial state, very much uh, uh, like the old settler colonial states in their uh, stages of establishment, namely uh, the first phases of establishing the United States, Canada, Australia, and so on, when European settlers uh, 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 eliminated the indigenous native people and were trying, and not trying, succeeded in building a state uh, uh, in, uh, on the homeland of native uh, people. The difference is 
that the Israeli project of settler colonialism of displacement and replacement still continues. And I think that this is the heart of the matter. And as I said in the beginning of my talk, that this heart of the matter is totally ignored in the present very serious internal conflict inside Israel that brings out every, every week almost half a million Israelis to demonstrate against the policies of the current government. But the debate is not about the real problem of Israel. The debate is about the kind of a, uh, of a regime that Jews want to continue to maintain with all the rights and the privilege and which will be denied to most of the Palestinians who live inside Palestine, historical Palestine or outside historical Palestine. So I think I was asked to talk for 10 minutes. If I'm not mistaken, this is 10 minutes. Yeah, excellent. And thank you so much for being with us. I just, uh, I don't know if there are any questions. I just have one. Um, what, 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 what would a country like Cyprus should do regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? I mean, we're close to Israel. We have, uh, there is potential for, you know, economic relations. Um, and we're also, we also had, you know, good relationships with Palestine. So in this conflict, what should our gov government, government do, in your opinion? Yeah, it's a very good uh, question. I, I think that, and I don't blame Cyprus, and I don't blame any member of the EU, uh, for instance, that still believe in uh, the two-state solution. After all, that's what at least uh, the state of Palestine in Ramallah uh, wants. And, and it, it makes sense that uh, uh, e the EU should continue to support the self-determination and the right for independence for the Palestinians. Uh, although I do think that the, the two-state solution is dead and we will have to look for something far more uh, 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 federative or integrative uh, as a future solution. But we'll put that one aside. I really think that what, uh, what Palestinians, and that includes me as an Israeli Jew as well, would have expected uh, uh, Cyprus to do and other members of the EU is to understand that this is not a, a balanced conflict, that there is an imbalance between the two sides. And I think it's time to treat Israel as the occupier, the colonizer, and, and to think about similar attitudes taken towards apartheid South Africa, which were not an attempt to mediate between the two sides, but to end oppression uh, and uh, oppression and uh, uh, occupation and dispossession. Perfect. Thanks so much. Any other questions by anyone? Okay, we'd like to thank you so much. Hopefully next year we can have you with us uh, here in oh, Cyprus. I will make every effort. I will make every effort and manage my diary a bit better. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. So thanks, everyone. Uh, please, let's go outside for the closing of the forum.